Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Daily IoT. This is gonna be another maker to product edition of Daily IoT. And on today's episode, I wanna talk about EDA lock-in and how this is something that you might want to think about if you are starting this journey to create a product of your own from the makerspace and something that you don't have to worry about there, but may become a problem for you as you start to make a product. And so first, we need a couple of definitions that you may have heard these terms, but don't know what they mean. Um, EDA and ECAD. And so EDA stands for Electronic Design Automation, another form of that that you might hear very often is ECAD, Electronic Computer Aided Design. And these are basically the software packages that you will use to create schematics, PCB layouts, and uh, things like that. We're talking about the Eagles, Altiums, Fritzings, um, PCB Way, things like that. The software that you use to draw your schematic and then use to create your printed circuit board layouts so that you can send the files off to fab and assembly houses to get your product made. Now, when I say EDA lock-in, this is something that I did not think about and it's biting me a little bit now, not a ton, but something that I probably would do differently if I, if I were starting over. And so when I first started this process and I was working with Agility, they very clearly asked me, do you have a preference on what software we use to create your schematic and PCB layout? And at the time, I my answer to them was, no, whatever you guys know and work in best, just use that. Um, you're the professionals. I just need you to get it done. And and that seemed like the right decision at the time, uh, but now it's 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 biting me a little bit. And let me explain how. Uh, so now I've got I'm, I'm at a point where I'm getting into very close to pilot run, going through the prototype stage, and we're needing to make some tweaks to the schematic. Well, with my background, having an EE background, and I've done some of this before, I can make very simple changes to things like the schematic, even if they're very simple PCB changes that I feel comfortable with. However, in this case, I, I've needed a few tweaks and instead of being able to make them myself, I can't because the software package that uh, Agility use, and this is pretty much industry standard, this is not any uh, minus points on Agility by any means, this is a very industry standard package, is Altium. Lots of companies are using Altium. Well, as a small one person shop, I can't afford an Altium license. You're talking several thousand dollars just to get a seat um, for Altium to be able to go in and make schematic changes or look at the PCB um, project files and things like that. And so I, I'm at a point right now where I actually can't contribute changes to the schematic even though I have the ability to do some of those things. I just, I don't have the software or license to do that. And so that's what I mean when I say EDA or ECAD lock-in. If you're gonna work with a company, um, they may not give you an option. Agility, like I said, very clearly up front said, do you have a preference, which I should have thought more about uh, and maybe had made a different decision. Um, but if you're given that option, think about if I get to a point where I need to make changes or I wanna have somebody else make changes down the road, like I wanna pay a freelancer, you might need to consider what software they use and are you locked in to that particular uh, EDA software package. And so uh, in my case, if I were doing it again, I would probably think through that a little bit more and make a different decision. Maybe even going with something like an Eagle or a KiCad, K-I-CAD, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, where if I needed to, I can install that software as well, or even something that maybe has a little bit more reasonable uh, price for the license. And I'm sorry, and I'm not saying Altium's unreasonable as a license cost, I'm just saying, that's a lot of money for a one man shop to pay just to make like a resistor change in a schematic. And so at this point I have to rely on somebody else that has a license to make those changes for me. And so that's something that I would do differently. And so just something that you, again, you don't have to consider this at all. If you're doing a maker project, you're probably using Eagle Fritzing or KiCad. Um, KiCad, I'm not sure which way to pronounce it. Uh, and so that's not something that you would have to deal with if you've uh, given this to a design firm that's using a piece of software that you likely don't have a license to and maybe couldn't afford even if you wanted one. And so uh, that's that's it, just something to think about if you're going down the product path and just getting started. Um, something that you might wanna take a minute to think about, talk to your design house, um, whoever you end up using about options there and if they'll even give you the option to, to choose a platform so that you don't have as much lock-in uh, later on down the road. And so that's it for today's episode. Question of the day. Somebody please educate me. Is it KiCad or KiCad? 
Or is this one of those GIF GIF arguments? Depends on who you ask. Stick it in the comments below. Would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.